India has witnessed the rising communal tensions across the country. Multiple factors can be held responsible for this rise, but in my recently published research article, The Effects of Local-Level Economic Inequality and Social Capital, I argue that India's growing economic inequality has contributed to the intensification of communal tensions because it has been polarizing Indian society and reducing intercommunity participation. Economic inequality has been growing steadily over the past several decades across the world, and the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated this growth. The world now finds itself at similar levels of inequality as during the height of Western imperialism in the early 20th century. Inequality in India has followed a similar trajectory. From 2020 to 2022, the number of Indian billionaires grew from 102 to 166, an increase of 63%. Oxfam India in 2022 estimated that 98 richest Indians owned as much wealth as the poorest 40% of the population. The growth in inequality was fueled partially by the pandemic, but the Indian government has also contributed to it over the last few years by cutting taxes on the rich, increasing indirect relative to direct taxes, which place a disproportionate burden on the poor, and cutting social welfare spending. High inequality levels have been widely associated with negative development outcomes, whether these are measured through income, health, or education attainments. However, the effects of inequality on social capital, a complex measure of people's associations, networks, and accompanying feelings such as trust and reciprocity, have been less studied, even though higher levels of social capital have not only been linked with a lot of positive economic, health, and education outcomes, but also found to act as an insurance against potential future communal violence. Social capital is one of the mediating links between inequality levels and development outcomes. Rising inequality could then also harm social capital, but at first glance, this may not appear to be so in India. Legatem Institute's Prosperity Index ranked India in 2021 as 68th out of 167 countries for social capital, a significant improvement from the 104th out of 110 countries rank that India achieved in 2011. Based on this ranking, it would seem that as inequality in India has grown over the last decade, so has its social capital. My research on the effects of local economic inequality on social capital in two southern Indian states, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, sheds more light on the matter. The research paper distinguishes between two different types of social capital, bonding and bridging. Bonding social capital measures inward-looking networks and associations of like-minded individuals with similar demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. Bridging social capital captures more open, outward-looking networks, comprising people from different backgrounds. In the article, I find that higher local-level inequality reduces bridging social capital, but boosts bonding social capital. In other words, as wealth and income inequality changed in the two states, towns and villages in the first two decades of the 21st century, places where inequality increased experienced a corresponding increased membership in associations of people with similar demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. At the same time, such places saw a decline in people's communal participation, measured through actions such as working with other people on addressing communal problems, my approximation of bridging social capital. The opposite happened in the Andhra and Telangana towns and villages, where economic inequality declined over time. Those villages experienced on average a reduced membership in homogeneous associations and a rise in communal participation and cross-cutting networks. These findings have wider policy implications for India. As wealth and income inequality in the country deepen, people are more likely to strengthen their networks with individuals of similar demographic, economic and social characteristics such as caste, class and religion. The growing wealth of India's family businesses as a form of very homogeneous associations is just one illustration of this trend. But as inequality grows, people are less likely to participate in more open and outward-looking networks 
that intersect demographic and socioeconomic categories. Existing research on social capital has linked bonding networks with less and bridging networks with more trust among people. The skyrocketing inequality in India is hence creating a more polarized and distrustful society. Not only does that further undermine the country's education and health efforts, it also increases the likelihood of internal conflicts. This has played out in India thus far in the form of rising inter-ethnic and inter-religious violence. Unless the government adopts specific policies to reduce the inequality, such violence is only likely to grow.